got us started at the bottom of the income statement, and so everybody kind of worked up from there, which works for me. It's, I mean, I give you the choice. It's a free country, and uh, I allow you to do that. But you know, this time Matthew's got us started at the top. TJ, what are you going to give me? You have no idea. See, it's a good thing I'm talking to you then. Do you know what, how we calculated every number in year one? Yeah. Okay, so now we're just using year two. We're just doing year two. <laughs> What's different between, what happened different in year two than, diff, than in year one? We, sir? They didn't, sell as much. they didn't sell as much. Okay, so that's why revenue is smaller. Oh, I thought they said 6,000. 6D, 6, six zero. Okay. Okay, now, another number, please. Okay. Catherine? Uh oh. Um, 1,000. $1,000 for the um, variable manufacturing overhead. It's more than just variable manufacturing overhead, is it not? Yes. That is a very good question. Well, that's what I had, but because well, because you, you, you have to multiply the five by the units produced instead of yeah, just the units sold. Right? Yeah. 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 So if you take five dollars times five thousand units produced, then it should come to twenty-five thousand dollars. And so, what do you think, Angie? I thought it was twenty-five thousand. You thought it was twenty-five thousand, Brett? What do you think? I think it's twenty-five thousand. That's what I thought originally. Heidi. Heidi? Do we ever put any costs on the income statement for things that are not sold? Oh, I mean, specifically, remember, what did I have in red on the variable costing income statement format that I've now erased? But I did have it in red just a little bit earlier today. What did I have written down? Inventory. So when do we take things out of inventory? When we sell them. And so 20000 is actually the correct answer. Okay. So, so the income statement is calculated, both income statements are calculated using the units sold. Okay. This one clearly is, because what's this S stand for? Cost of goods sold. So both income statements are constructed using the units sold, not the units produced. Okay. But I'm, I appreciate kind of the excitement and the interest and the banter, the exchanges of thoughts that occurred, because hopefully this lesson will be more memorable for all of that. Because I, I don't want you screwing this up on the test. Oh, I won't. Okay. Mr. King, another number, please. Uh, you got the $15,000 for the yeah, these, these are getting easy, aren't they? And maybe I should just take this one myself since it's so easy. And I have talked to everybody at least once today already, I think. Have I not? Maybe, yeah, and several twice, I suspect. Heidi, do you have some calculations for me? $36,000. How about operating income, um, Aubrey? Zero. Zero. Is that allowed? Is that possible? Absolutely, it's possible. It's allowed. That's break even. We know that too, don't we? At, at break even net income is. Scott! <laughs> Another number. Let's go, let's move on to year three. $90,000, I'm presuming it's dollars. Is it dollars? 
Okay, how'd you calculate that? Um, 6, times 6,000 times 15, but that doesn't, where's the dollars come from? Which one of those two numbers is a dollar? The 9,000 or the 15? Or not the 9,000, the 6,000 or the 15? The 15. The 15. That's what I was trying to get you to, you know, anyway. We're there now. Okay. Because you, anyway, because you said, you're like, it's $90,000. So how'd you calculate that? 6,000 times 15. $15. There we are. Okay. That's where the dollar sign magically appears from. Taylor, another number, please. Um, yes. 30, for are you asking me? Okay. $30,000. See, that, whole, that lesson about when do we recognize the cost applies here as well, right? Why is that 30000 and not 25000 <laughs> Is that the question you had? Yeah, I still don't understand why. Because, like, and then, I mean, aren't these rough materials and all that stuff based off of what you made? The costs are incurred based on what you made, but the income statement we are trying to do, you recall the conversation we had about matching? Have we talked about that in here? We are matching. Uh, the accounting, when you're constructing an income statement, particularly when it comes to product costs, you are matching revenue and the expenses associated with that revenue. You still, I don't still see a light bulb above your head. Okay? And so that's, that is cost, th those are the cost of sales. Materials, labor, variable overhead, in a sense, are cost of sales, and we want to match those. So, if we're going to calculate revenue, why calculate? I mean, in some sense, you know, if we're going to calculate revenue based on the number of units sold, then we need to calculate cost, uh, the cost of those sales on the basis of cost of units sold. Make some sense? Okay. A little better. Got you got it. Okay. There you are. How about another number, Carrie? Okay, I'm happy to put 6,000 where? And what's the label? <laughs> I don't know, that's why I asked you. Ooh, variable what? So you're an administrative. Maybe in another class. We haven't, we haven't done that in, in this class. TJ? Okay. Have you had that in another class recently? Principles one? Or not principles one, intermediate one? Intermediate one? Whew, I'm glad I don't have to teach that stuff either. Oh. That was Carrie. Brandon, you're on. Uh, 54. 54. What is that? $54,000. And what is that? $54,000. Yes, you did say all that. Oh, sorry. That would be the uh, gross, gross margin. Margin. Contribution. 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 It's one or the other. But only one of them's right. Yeah. The contribution margin. Anybody? I've actually had students who struggled with the thought, so Dr. Fessler, what does, it, what does the contribution margin 